Thank you for joining us on Y254 News Updates. My name is Patricia Morioki. Tonight we get to talk about the coronavirus that has become a global disaster. We're going to be talking about understanding COVID-19. And to help us talk about this topic tonight, we have Dr. Samrat Shah, who is the consultant, a physician, and the medical director of Medihill Hospitals. And... Before we start this, I would like to ask our viewers, if you have any questions that you'd like the doctor to answer before the, our show ends, please make sure that you talk to us on our social media platforms. That is on Y254 channel on Facebook and Y254 channel on Twitter. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. So, uh, Dr. Samrat, thank you very much for finding the time uh, to join us tonight to talk about um, the coronavirus. Because I could say that we might or we may not be taking uh, this virus uh, seriously as uh, we need to do. So my first question to you tonight would be, what is, we've all had it, we've seen it in the media, we've seen it trending on social media, the coronavirus and the damage that it has uh, managed to do so far, but what is coronavirus? What is COVID-19? See, COVID-19 uh, is basically a virus, it's an infection of animals. Mm -hmm. It was not an infection of human beings. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When we talk about coronavirus, coronavirus is a disease which is very commonly seen in children causing flu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is a new strain of coronavirus, mm -hmm. which is called as COVID-19. Yeah, uh, because it is called 19 because it started in the year of 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this virus is usually seen in animals, okay. and then it was transmitted from animals to humans after a mutation mm -hmm. and after an intake of meat, mm -hmm. as it is known everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now when it affects the human beings. Um, it, this is a disease which causes co flu-like symptoms, mm -hmm. which causes sore throat-like symptoms, mm -hmm. which causes pneumonia, mm -hmm. basically respiratory symptoms, mm -hmm. and then now it spreads by droplets. Mm -hmm. Droplets by by droplets, I mean uh, it spreads when you cough, it spreads when you sneeze. Mm -hmm. You know, we are talking about hand wash and sanitizer. So mm -hmm. then, how is it related to coughing and sneezing? Okay. You know, when you cough and sneeze the droplets will go and settle down around one meter of your distance mm -hmm. yeah where they will go and settle down on some place mm -hmm. so now when i go and touch that surface area then it the virus is transmitted on my hands mm -hmm. now because human beings have a habit of touching the hands on your face mm -hmm. your eyes nose and mouth and this is the place from where this virus enters inside your body okay. and then it causes infection mm -hmm. that's the reason why we are telling people to sanitize hands regularly mm -hmm. so that they can kill those viruses present in the hands and does not transmit that infection to us okay yeah. i like that you've mentioned about the symptoms of the virus which yeah. we've talked about a cough you've talked about a sore throat you've yeah. talked about fever yeah but we know that someone couldn't uh, could experience these same symptoms if they are suffering from something different or even a normal flu or a normal cough. True. So once I, I get to experience these symptoms, do I try home treatment and maybe self-quarantine myself or do I immediately uh, show up at a testing center and have myself checked? You see, there are two differences between common cold and uh, coronavirus. Okay. When you talk about common cold, mm -hmm. they usually present with running nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They have uh, allergic kind of uh, sneezing, mm -hmm. wearing the sneezing is more when exposed to closed, mm -hmm. uh, when, is, when there is exposure to cold, mm -hmm. or the sneezing is more early in the mornings when the temperature is a bit lower side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's more in common cold, okay. where they have running nose, when they have sore throat, when they have myalgia. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about corona, when we talk about COVID-19, mm -hmm. they present with fever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 90 percent of population with COVID-19 they have fever mm -hmm. then the next symptom they have is dry cough then the third symptom very commonly seen is breathing difficulty mm -hmm. if you have fever if you are having cough if you are having breathing difficulty mm -hmm. no matter whether you have exposure to the COVID-19 infected person or not no matter whether you have traveled or not mm -hmm. now it is a pandemic mm -hmm. now you need not sit yourself and thinking that I am not being exposed to anyone mm -hmm. you never know whether you have been exposed or not because mm -hmm. it spreads by droplet you never know somebody coughed and went uh, mm -hmm. the particles are there you touch that particle you never know mm -hmm. so any person who is having fever cough and breathing difficulty mm -hmm. should immediately reach the hospital and notify the hospital that I'm having these kind of symptoms. Mm -hmm. We do a chest x-ray and see there are certain findings for chest x-ray. Mm -hmm. If all these things are together, you should be tested for COVID-19. Okay. So we've had cases in other uh, parts of the country, of the of the world, whereby yeah. people have had the virus, they have tested positive for the virus without any symptoms showing. Yes. So being in Kenya, mm -hmm. we so far have uh, seven cases from four cases yesterday how now do we know that probably there is no more than what we have because if there are people testing positive and there are no symptoms what if we have people out there who have no symptoms at all and they are not showing up what do you think we should do 
You see, there are many people I feel uh, wherein uh, who have COVID-19 but have not been tested mm -hmm. because the testing facility available with us is very less. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is only one center which is testing for COVID-19 in the entire country. Mm -hmm. And that makes it more vulnerable for having less number of cases being detected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and The seven number what we are seeing, I don't think so it's the number which is accurate mm -hmm. because there may be so many people who have been exposed to those seven people mm -hmm. and then the local transmission must have already been started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, for those people uh, who are asymptomatic, they should be tested only if they have history of travel mm -hmm. to a country which is affected by COVID-19. Okay. As of now, that should be the concern. Mm -hmm. But today, when it is a pandemic, when there is a local transmission, I believe anyone who is having fever, cough or breathing difficulty mm -hmm. should be tested for COVID-19, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether there is a travel history or not, irrespective of whether there is a contact history or not, mm -hmm. they need to be tested. Okay. Yeah. You've said that we, uh, having one isolation center or, or sorry, having one testing center is not enough, yeah. especially during now that the, the virus is really becoming something that many countries have been unable to really deal with. What, how many centers do you think are right for us that we should have in, in fact, this I feel uh, every county should have a testing facility mm -hmm. and every person who is having fever, cough and breathing difficulty should be tested for COVID-19 irrespective of travel history or contact history. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so how is coronavirus, um, how is it transmitted or how is it spread from one person to, to the other? And you've talked about uh, if the virus lies on, it finds its way on a surface, we would also like to know how long does it last? Yeah. yeah, on that surface. See, there was a study which was conducted in China mm -hmm. and uh, this study showed that on the steel materials or any material for copper material, it can stay up to six to eight hours mm -hmm. on that surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But there are some studies which are coming up and telling that the droplets can be there in the aerosol or the droplets can be there on the materials for even so, uh, 16 to 17 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So there is no proven theory about it because it's a new strain we are learning every day. Mm -hmm. But as of now, we believe that it is six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when we talk about preventing measures, we've talked about um, washing your hands, we've talked about sanitizing. Uh, the government has said that every pu the public transport should make sure that there, is, there are sanitizers, which I can say I have not yet seen, yes. which probably puts Kenyans uh, at risk. But when we talk about measures, preve uh, preventive measures to make sure that you don't get to the, uh, the virus, do, do I need to wear a mask? Does, a, does wearing a mask help? Does wearing gloves help? Because we've seen uh, certain people in the country going for the mask and going for the gloves. Does it really protect me from getting the virus? You see, wearing mask is nowhere written in WHO guidelines as a protective measure for coronavirus. Mm -hmm. For COVID-19, it is very clearly mentioned by CDC as well mm -hmm. that any person who is coughing or sneezing or having secretions, mm -hmm. he is the one who is supposed to wear the mask. Okay. Yeah. Not in general, everyone in public has to uh, wear the mask. Mm -hmm. But gloves, I would definitely say yes, you should try to wear gloves as much as possible mm -hmm. because you know uh, people are buying masks but not wearing buying gloves you know mask should be bought by someone who is having cough and sneezing mm -hmm. but gloves should be worn because you never know who has coughed where mm -hmm. who has sneezed where mm -hmm. and what surface you are touching okay. i think that should be the most important thing to be done first mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. apart from that preventive measures i'm seeing people dying to buy sanitizers there's a long queue there is no sanitizer available in the country mm -hmm. it's all out of stock but i feel uh, instead of sanitizers even if you wash your hands regularly with soap and water mm -hmm. that's going to be as effective as sanitizers mm -hmm. at least 20 seconds make sure that in running water you wash your hands with soap and water mm -hmm. i think that's more than enough to be done okay. after everything you touch or every possible suspected thing you do mm -hmm. you make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water mm -hmm. apart from that using sanitizers which have alcohol percent of more than 60 mm -hmm. is more than enough to be used as a preventive measure mm -hmm. if you are having symptoms of fever cough and breathing difficulty mm -hmm. if it is mild symptom in the form of just fever and sore throat even then i would request people that you self-isolate yourself even if you don't have history of breathing difficulty whether you don't have history of travel or contact mm -hmm. you tr still try to self-isolate yourself for at least 14 days mm -hmm. because you never know whether you have covid 19 or not okay. so it's if if possible you should self-isolate now what do you mean by self-isolate is mm -hmm. you should be staying in a separate room where your washrooms are separate 
where the materials you are using are separate it should not happen that you are using a common phone and that phone is given to someone else mm-hmm. because you never know you may be transmitting the phone uh, viruses on the phone so as much as possible communication with the society communication with family members should be avoided mm-hmm. all the food material should be stocked separately for that room for 14 days mm-hmm. as much as possible everything should be isolated for that person and avoid public contact that's what we mean by self isolation okay i like that you've mentioned that you should use a separate washroom you're supposed to use probably a separate phone as much as you're talking about the virus and the the damage and everything that is happening right now in the in the world when you look at our country how many households really have two washrooms how many how many people are, a, are able to have a house that whereby you can have a, a certain part whereby uh, patricia has experienced all these let us put patricia in a certain corner of the house so how do we now uh, as kenyans put into practice self isolation because i believe living in apartment you have probably if you would do if you if you have to put your clothes uh, on the rooftop you have to go there and just do that mm-hmm. you might find yourself uh, mingling with people on the streets or, or in the corridors so what exactly uh, does, do we mean by self isolation especially considering our state as a country very true as a state of our country we cannot afford to do all these things practically it is impossible to be done and that's the reason why uh, i'm more f- worried about the country because it's going to be a disaster because the state of the country the economic crisis what we have we cannot afford covid-19 mm-hmm. that's a fact we should know okay. because we cannot afford malaria deaths we cannot afford tb death how are we going to afford deaths from covid-19 mm-hmm. we're not able to combat with the diseases which we have since a long time mm-hmm. so i think for such kind of things the government should start having isolation centers in every nook and corner of the country mm-hmm. so that such kind of people are isolated okay there should be isolation centers mm-hmm. as of now we don't have such kind of centers but at least i would request people that as much as possible avoid contact with people mm-hmm. if possible make sure that you wear mask when you're going out for something very important mm-hmm. wear mask and go make sure that you sanitize your hands mm-hmm. every surface you are touching make sure that that is cleaned with at least soap and water or with alcohol based sanitizers okay we're going to be taking a very short break on y254 but don't go far away we have more on covid-19 when we come back <laughs> Y254 Imagine Thank you very much for staying with us on Y254 News and if you're just joining us we've just we're talking about understanding COVID-19 we've just talked about what exactly do uh, is COVID-19 we've talked about the symptoms we've talked about the preventive measures that have been set up uh, before we continue the discussion I would like us to take a question uh, we have Nick Mwenda asking if the virus can survive at a temperature of above 27 degrees Celsius how does it survive in the human body you see the virus is heat resistant virus mm-hmm. yeah because it, there was initially a concept which came in and said that uh, this virus cannot survive uh, in a hot climates yeah, especially and especially in africa yeah mm-hmm. and now we see the coronavirus is there in middle east mm-hmm. it's there in dubai mm-hmm. it's there in singapore mm-hmm. they are the places where the temperature is going up to 35 degrees centigrade mm-hmm. so it's it's heat resistant i don't think so heat can uh, having humid temperature or climate of hot uh, hot climates are going to kill this mm-hmm. but yes one study proved that temperature of more than 50 degrees can kill the virus okay yeah. uh, i have another question from lauri naomi who is asking for instance you get the coronavirus when you're in the rural areas what should you do if you're in up country and you realize that probably you have the sy- symptoms let's not say coronavirus because for you to have the virus you have to be tested so if you are in up country and you realize that you have the symptoms what you do yeah uh, cknh and uh, government facilities have given helpline numbers to mm-hmm. all the hospitals for that matter mm-hmm. yeah what has been told by the government facilities is you reach to the nearest healthcare facility mm-hmm. the healthcare facility people will contact the uh, respected authority people who has been assigned for covid-19 mm-hmm. then it is being told that those people can ask you certain more questions mm-hmm. and then if it is suspected case of covid-19 they are going to come Mm-hmm. take the samples from the patient mm-hmm. and then going to test it if it is positive they are going to isolate the patient okay uh, so far we have recovered cases worldwide uh, but can you contract the virus twice 
Yeah, see, this this is still a question mark because this is a new strain. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, but one thing which has come up right now, few days back, was a study proved that even if you are cured, mm -hmm. there are chances that for the next two weeks you can still give this infection to people. Mm -hmm. So some studies say that even after getting cured, you should be isolating yourself for at least two weeks from okay. that. Okay, so if I have uh, I have the virus, I have been isolated, uh, and I have recovered from the virus and have been released to go home. How long does the protection, like the protection that probably the, the treatment, as much as you know it, it has no cure, but for you to get uh, to the recovery part, there are probably certain measures that are being taken by the clinical uh, people. So how long does the protection cover? That's what uh, they have told that you should be isolated for at least next two weeks mm -hmm. and there have no cases being reported that wherein the COVID-19 has reinfected again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But as for till date, there are no cases reported so we don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, based on the scenario, current scenario, what we have more than 100,000 people being affected with it, mm -hmm. not even one case having a reinfection. So we can still believe that there is no reinfection chances. Mm -hmm. Because it's a viral infection, we'll still consider it as having an immunity. Okay, so what are the risk factors? Uh, are people probably with underlying medical conditions at a higher risk? Uh, maybe is there a certain uh, gender? Is there a certain age? Is there a certain group of people who are at a higher risk of uh, getting the virus? Yeah, you see, um, based on all the deaths what we have seen, uh -huh. based on all the mortalities what we have seen, uh -huh. it was seen that uh, people more than age of 60 uh -huh. and people who are diabetic, uh -huh. who are having blood pressure, uh -huh. who are having kidney failures, who are having cancers, uh -huh. who are having HIV disease, uh -huh. tuberculosis, these are the kind of people who are vulnerable to have severe form of COVID-19 uh -huh. and who can develop pneumonia, uh -huh. who may have deaths. Uh -huh. But apart from that, no deaths have been still reported in age less than 10. Uh -huh. It is being found that COVID-19 infection goes in a milder form of disease in younger generations uh -huh. and then it recovers after two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, would you say as citizens, as Kenyan citizens, as a government, as a um, Ministry of Health, are we taking this virus? serious as we're supposed to be uh, taken? No, I think uh, the seriousness among the people as well as uh, the officials has not been that uh, mm -hmm. as much as what is expected mm -hmm. because uh, having self-isolation <coughs> is something which can be a dangerous uh, situation mm -hmm. because you cannot trust people. Mm -hmm. See, we are living in a country where people believe that African genetics will not get COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We see people telling us because I'm a Muslim, I'll not get COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We see uh, youths telling us that because I'm a youth, I'm going to have milder form of disease, so why should I worry? Mm -hmm. But the bigger thing which is lacking here is lack of awareness that even if the youth is going to get a milder form of symptoms, mm -hmm. he can give this disease to someone who is vulnerable to have a severe form of disease who can die because of the youth. Okay. So I think youth should be more serious about it. Mm -hmm. The government should start taking it more seriously and lock down the entire country mm -hmm. because we have seven cases detected now. Mm -hmm. Self-quarantine should be stopped mm -hmm. <coughs> and supervised quarantine should be started. Mm -hmm. Any person entering to the country from the country having even one case of COVID-19 mm -hmm. should be isolated under supervision and not self-quarantine. Okay. Uh, so far in the country, we've not had any local uh, transmissions. Uh, they have all been international because every person has come from ab uh, abroad. Uh, the new cases that were confirmed today, among them is a couple from yeah. Spain and a Burujan was uh, in Dubai. How can now the government, what can the government or what can the Ministry of Health do to control and make sure that we don't get to the point whereby we can hear someone in Moranga, someone in Meru, someone in Kisumu as the virus. See, the first thing what the government should do is every county should have a testing facility. Mm -hmm. See, unless and until you have a testing facility, there is no point in having a, a hospital for that matter. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't test, there is no point you are going to get to know about the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. There should be testing facility in every county. Mm -hmm. Every county should have an isolation ward, an isolation unit, mm -hmm. an emergency team set in to help these COVID-19 positive cases. Mm -hmm no person should be allowed whether it is citizen or it is non-citizen mm -hmm. to enter inside country if they are coming from uh, COVID-19 affected countries mm -hmm. even if they are coming inside the country they should be isolated for at least 14 days. Okay uh, I would like to take another question from Carol Stanley who is asking is there any possibility of the corona outbreak continuing for the rest of the year without any cure? 
cure is still not there uh -huh. uh, unfortunately we every every part of the world is trying to have some uh, measures to cure this uh -huh. there are so many fake articles coming out that this is the cure this is the cure but none of them have been approved by who uh -huh. but american government has started uh, testing for vaccines uh -huh. they have tested already on three people in america uh -huh. but uh, even then this year we are not supposed likely to have any kind of vaccine or treatment for covid-19 mm -hmm. expected uh, treatment or vaccine is supposed to be july 2021 okay uh, we have faith care is asking how long should a person self quarantine themselves 14 days okay how do we protect children below the age of one year from getting the virus uh, children below one year the first thing to be done is the entire family should be very careful about it mm -hmm. you know because uh, you can you never know whether the child has it or not the child is going to get it from parents mm -hmm. so make sure that the entire family is very serious about covid-19 mm -hmm. make sure that you isolate yourself if you are having covid-19 mm -hmm. um, avoid uh, if you have symptoms of covid-19 avoid going near to the baby mm -hmm. even breastfeeding should be avoided as much as possible okay. because you may have symptoms of covid-19 mm -hmm. you may transmit that to the baby as well mm -hmm. so how do i protect myself now yeah so to protect yourself if you are having these symptoms mm -hmm. then you have to isolate mm -hmm. if you don't have symptoms make sure that you maintain your self hygiene mm -hmm. have hand sanitization mm -hmm. and uh, washing your hands mm -hmm. wearing mask if you are having cough and cold mm -hmm. avoiding outing uh, in public uh, areas mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you don't shake your hands we have a habit of shaking hands mm -hmm. yeah i think avoiding uh, handshake should be the first thing to be done mm -hmm. avoid going in public gatherings mm -hmm. uh, any place where there are 50 people and above mm -hmm. we should be avoiding going there Okay. Uh so we've talked about uh the the new cases that have just be announced today by the Minister of uh Health. Should we really as a country still be going to work? Should we still be seeing the congestion that you are still seeing uh, in CBD? Is it safe? I don't think so it's very safe. Mm -hmm. I feel very risky about uh, seeing those states on the road mm -hmm. because uh, as much as possible we should try to work from home. Uh, public gathering should be avoided um, you know there are some places where there are even people <coughs> working on shift mm -hmm. i have seen so many places where people uh, go out at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. and then the next lot comes in at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. you know when you have so many people coming and going out at one point of time mm -hmm. that's also very much dangerous so, mm -hmm. so i think if you are not able to avoid uh, um, uh, coming people to workplace at least you should change the shift timings 5 o'clock people should go out 6 o'clock people should come in mm -hmm. so that at least we have a one hour of gap between those people crossing over mm -hmm. as much as possible such things should be done okay motatos are not very serious about it mm -hmm. uh, that's the big dangerous thing what we have mm -hmm. there's no uh, sanitizer seen yeah, in the public no, transport yeah i can confidently say there is none I yes for one and yes. i couldn't find it yeah. uh, but now when we talk about how oh, there's, there's a lot of panic there's a lot of fear among us people so how do we control how do we make sure that people don't panic and think of uh, um different or very uh, bad thoughts or make making sure that as much as uh, we are going through this uh, disaster we manage to remain calm yes. and to also be very vigilant yeah, you see uh, more than corona it is the fear virus which is spreading i guess mm -hmm. so i want to tell people that uh, 80% of people they get cured with corona even mm -hmm. if you have corona virus infection mm -hmm. because the way we see the number of people being affected in italy mm -hmm. more than 25000 people affected but the death rate is around 500 to 600 mm -hmm. so the death rate is not as high as we are worried about mm -hmm. but that does not mean that i should not be cautious mm -hmm. what is supposed to be done by us should be done by us mm -hmm. we are having international patients coming up with covid-19 mm -hmm. it is a duty of all the citizens of the country that we prevent local transmission mm -hmm. by taking all the words given by his excellency seriously yes. and start doing things as it has been told mm -hmm. and avoid neglecting covid-19 remove these things from the mind that uh, i am an african mm -hmm. i am a muslim mm -hmm. i am a kikyu i am not going to get covid-19 mm -hmm. covid-19 does not come and check which race caste and sex you belong to mm -hmm. before it comes to you mm -hmm. yeah so make sure that you take covid-19 very seriously mm -hmm. take precautions what is required for you but do not panic be calm because mm -hmm. panicking is not going to help by any way okay uh, your final thoughts your final advice to people watching us uh, tonight you could use that camera what are your final thought what is your final advice on this covid-19 what would you want the people at home to do better i want to tell youth that please take this very seriously covid-19 is not something which can be taken as a joke Uh, even if you get a common form a uh, milder form of disease you may give it to someone who may have a death so please make sure that you have if you have symptoms you isolate yourself 
do not uh, roam around in public do not avoid public gatherings as much as possible make sure that you wear a face mask if you are having cough or sneezing make sure that you sanitize your hands regularly after everything you use avoid public gatherings that's the first thing which i want to tell and if you have symptoms please take it very seriously reach the healthcare facility as soon as possible so that you are tested for covid-19 do not be scared of covid-19 because i have seen people in opd coming and telling us that if i am tested they will isolate me and then i'm going to die uh-huh. that's not going to happen there are chances of survival in more than 80% of cases there are chances that you may also save the community and country please take it seriously and start taking the measures as soon as possible okay uh, thank you very much uh, you. dr samrat for finding the time to come and talk to us about uh, that so if you have been watching us uh, tonight please make sure that everything that the doctor has said everything that you've heard from the uh, cabinet secretary of health everything that um, the president of the republic of kenya has said we should observe please make sure that you do that so that we will we, we, we will all work together in making sure that we fight coronavirus uh, before we wind up i would like to say that if you are any information there's a code that has uh, been uh, provided for people you can dial star 719 ash which is going to give you details about the virus let us not stay uh, and not know what this virus is let i would like to challenge every person to be aware of what coronavirus is and may you take it upon your, uh, yourself to protect yourself and to protect your neighbors that is all we have for you tonight we are going to make sure that on y254 tv you're updated on everything that happens thank you very much my name is patricia moriaki do have yourselves a very good night